Coronoid process fracture. In this video, we're going to be discussing the treatment of coronoid process fracture, and that will include the approaches and the complication of the coronoid process fracture. We all know that the coronoid process fracture is connected to the terrible triad and also is connected to radial head fractures. So you're going to find some overlap between the three entities, and that is expected. Type 1 coronoid fracture, which is the small avulsion of the coronoid, is the one that you will find in terrible triad. So don't underestimate it. If you have an elbow dislocation with a coronoid fracture and a radial head fracture, reduce the terrible triad injury and displant it. The most common likely early complication is recurrent dislocation and surgical treatment is needed. Combination of the x-rays and the CT scan will be useful to define the injury. The AP view will show you if the fracture is intermedial fracture which probably will not be appreciated well on the lateral x-ray. So the lateral view will show you what type of coronoid fracture. Is it a small piece or large piece? A CT scan in this situation will be helpful. It can also tell us the status of the radial head fracture and is it reconstructable or not and how many fragments are there. If there are three or more fragments in the radial head, then you probably need to replace that. You got to be ready to replace it. You also need to know that when the coronoid is fractured and the elbow is dislocated, the lateral collateral ligament is injured and that must be repaired. So you need to go to the lateral side. So what is the typical surgical approach? The patient will be supine. Most of the time, you will go laterally, but sometimes you go posteriorly. An additional medial approach may be needed. If you're dealing with posterolateral rotatory instability, there will be a fracture radial head and will be avulsion of the lateral collateral ligament. The coronoid fracture probably will be a tip avulsion. The coronoid fracture can be fixed through the radial head defect laterally. How do you approach the radial head? There are two approaches for fracture of the radial head. A Kaplan approach, which is more anterior approach that splits the extensor digitorum communis or it goes between the extensor carbi radialis pravis and the extensor digitorum communis. This anterior approach will decrease the risk of damage to the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, but it will increase the incidence of injury to the posterior interosseous nerve. And the Coker approach, which is more posterior between the extensor carbi and nares, and the anconius muscle because that incision is more posterior there is more risk of injury to the lateral collateral ligament in the coker approach you open the capsule anterior to the equator to avoid injury to the lateral collateral ligament and you will keep the forearm pronated to avoid injury to the posterior interosseous nerve. So pronate during the approach and put the plate with the forearm in neutral. The pronation will shift the nerve anteriorly and away from the surgical field. The posterior interosseous nerve crosses the proximal radius, four centimeter distal to the radial head. The bicipital tuberosity is the distal limit of the plate placement. Anything distal to that may injure the posterior interosseous nerve. So now we approach the radial head, and the radial head is three or more pieces, and it is non-reconstructable. 
In the presence of fractured dislocation of the elbow and complex instability, radial head excision is not recommended. In fact, it is contraindicated. So in terrible triad, do not excise the radial head. What portion of the coronoid process is associated with a terrible triad? The coronoid process tip. Coronoid process fractures, less than 10%, don't affect elbow stability significantly and may not require repair. That is probably true when you fix the radial head. If instability occurs after fixation of the radial head and the lateral collateral ligament complex and the coronoid process looks like a small piece, then you may want to do capsular repair, incorporating the fragment, or you may want to do MCL reconstruction if the MCL is injured, which is very rare. That situation is more common after radial head replacement than after radial head fixation. So you will do suture repair of the coronoid through bone tunnels in the proximal ulna. You will use number five, non-absorbable sutures, or you may use suture anchors. If the radial head is reconstructable, means less than three pieces, then you will do open reduction internal fixation. And usually you don't need coronoid fixation in that situation. If you have three pieces or more of the radial head, then you will do radial head arthroplasty and you may need to do MCL repair. Go medially for this repair. So when we do ORIF of the radial head and there is elbow instability, you do not want to accept suboptimal fixation of the radial head and you don't want to immobilize the elbow for a long period of time, otherwise you get a stiffness. If the patient has elbow stiffness postoperatively, treat the patient by supervised physical therapy and the use of static or dynamic progressive elbow splinting to improve motion of the elbow. So when you plate the radial head fracture, the safe zone is between 90 to 110 degree arc from the radial styloid process to the Lister tubercle with the arm in a neutral position. Just remember, you pronate during the approach and you put the plate with the forearm in a neutral position. When you replace the radial head, it should be anatomic to restore the normal size and length. When you do radial head replacement, do not oversize or overstuff the radial head. After you implant the radial head prosthesis, trial, and you find that the elbow is still unstable. Suture repair of the capsule coronoid avulsion piece can be done through the lateral approach. You're gonna tie the suture with the elbow inflection with the radial head prosthesis in place. Then we'll do lateral ligamentous repair to the bone. LCL repair should be done with the elbow at 90 degree of flexion with the forearm in pronation if the MCL is intact. How do you assess the medial collateral ligament integrity? The MCL is repaired if there is an indication of instability on exam after the lateral collateral ligament repair and the fracture fixation is done, especially when the instability occurs with extension beyond 30 degrees. If there is persistent instability after repair of the MCL or the capsule incorporating the coronoid fracture, then an external fixture hinged or unhinged is used and this situation is extremely rare.
Treatment of the posteromedial rotatory instability is different. In this case, you will have fracture coronoid and you will have avulsion of the LCL and no fracture of the radial head. The coronoid fracture is an anteromedial facet fracture and can be missed on an x-ray. You need to look at the AP view or get a CT scan. So the treatment is to repair the LCL and the coronoid fracture. The approach, the patient will be supine and you can go medial and lateral. You will usually buttress the anteromedial facet and you repair the associated lateral collateral ligament injury and that will provide stability to the elbow. When you fix the anteromedial facet, you can use plate or screws. You may want to use an external fixture if needed to stabilize or to supplement the repair. In this case, the anteromedial facet fracture, you will need to go medially. You will decompress the ulnar nerve and you will do direct approach to the coronoid fracture through the flexor carbi and nares split. You will be able to expose the coronoid process, the MCL, and sublime tubercle. Usually use buttress plate fixation, or you can use screws from posteriorly to anteriorly if the fragment is large. Open reduction internal fixation with medial approach. The coronoid fractures are typically approached laterally, but it can also be approached medially, especially if it is comminuted. When is a medial approach needed in coronoid fracture? When the fracture head and neck of the radius prevents adequate visualization of the coronoid, and when the coronoid fracture is comminuted, when a stable fixation can only be achieved by plates and the screws, so you got to go medially, especially in anteromedial fracture of the coronoid. You can use three techniques. Number five, non-absorbable suture through the under drill holes if the fragment is small, or you can do from posterior to anterior cannulated screw or a plate if the fracture is large, like type two or type three. But you can use buttress plate fixation in addition to lateral ligament repair, if you have a posteromedial rotatory instability. How do you immobilize the elbow after surgery? You immobilize the elbow in 90 degree of flexion with the forearm in pronation in case of lateral ligamentous instability to avoid posterior subluxation of the elbow. And you immobilize the elbow in supination if there is medial ligamentous instability. They found that after surgery, a good outcome can be achieved with postoperative rehab protocol with active range of motion exercises for the elbow beginning 48 hours postoperatively. Movement of the elbow will be from full flexion to 30 degree of extension. A good result for the terrible triad is surgery and early rehab protocol. The active range of motion will recruit the muscles that act as a dynamic stabilizer to the elbow. What are the complications? Recurrent elbow instability, especially on the medial side. Failure of fixation, that is usually the radial head fracture failure of fixation. Stiffness of the elbow, which is the most common complication following surgery for terrible triad, and that will result in decreased range of motion. Heterotopic ossification, you may want to give prophylaxis for head injured patients, post-traumatic arthritis, and missed diagnosis. Failure to recognize and repair the coronoid process fracture will result in instability and degenerative arthritis. In general, 
for the terrible triad, complications and the reoperation rates are high. If you find a coronoid fracture, it may be an indication that the elbow is unstable and trouble may occur. For the anteromedial fracture of the coronoid, failure to recognize the injury may result in elbow instability and degenerative arthritis. If you miss the anteromedial coronoid fracture, the unhumeral articulation becomes incongruous under gravity with various stress that will lead to early degenerative joint disease. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.